Hi, I'm Zach Noyle and welcome to PhotoCon 2020 Virtual. Before we get started with this next session, I just wanted to run you through the room. As you see, there's a chat to the right side for questions or comments. So please leave those and we will get around to it. Today, we have an incredible session with Calvin Anderson of Canon USA. Calvin is gonna be talking about the EOS R5 system. We're gonna bring in Mason, Canon's senior marketing specialist first, and um, let them take it away from there. Hey, Hi, Mason. Zach, how's it going? I'm okay, how are you been? I'm doing great, virtual. I mean, I wish I was there on Oahu, but you know, it's all good. Yeah, me too, I wish you were here too, so. <laughs> Hope to have you here you. and um, looking forward to the presentation. I'm loving my R5 and just really changing the way that I'm shooting. And it's everything about it. it it's ignited a new creativity mm -hmm. for me um, to want to get out there and just shoot and like push the limits of it and learn the technology. I'm finding myself looking at so many more videos on how to maximize the technology that I have there. And it's That's endless. Right. I keep finding something new and keep doing this and it's like, uh, man, I want to get out there and shoot. So really excited to hear Calvin's presentation. I'm going to let you guys take it away Excellent. from here and I'll see you at the Excellent. end. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take and care. thank you everybody as well too. Um, again, my name is Mason Higa. I work with Canon USA as a senior marketing specialist. Uh, part of my role and responsibilities is the uh, field of education. And what we do is we get to have the best job in the world. We go about and we talk to people and we engage with folks and we create content all about photography and of course, Canon gear. So it's like, it's, it's literally the dream job. And I always tell that to the boss. I say hashtag dream job because we have such a great time. And I'm really thankful to all of you that are tuning in as well too. And I hope you guys all come away with something great. Um, you know, and you learn something new about our EOS R systems. You know, before we start, I just wanted to shout out to um, to two new lenses that we just announced: the EOS um, for the EOS R system, and it's the RF 50 millimeter 1.8 STM lens. And it's a great, great new 50 millimeter lens. And please be sure to click on. Um, you know, we'll be having links inside of the chat, and you know, call out to some of the products as. A, Fantastic brand new lens. Um, and you can learn more on our YouTube page as well as um, on our product page. And then, of course, we have our new RF 7200 F4 LISUSM. And it's a great travel lens um, for those of you that are looking for a walk around lens. It's a fantastic little small lens. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, I just can't believe that they engineered this lens to be this tiny. It's a 7200 F4L. And of course, I just wanted to talk a little you know just wanted to share this with you folks because again it's brand new and it's going to be released soon and it's going to be a fantastic little walk around kit um i want to bring in calvin and calvin's going to be talking about our eos r system and he's got a great presentation um calvin are you there i mean stay tuned because this is going to be really great for those of you that are looking for a new mirrorless system um our new R5 and R6. There's Calvin. Hey. Our new R5 and R6 were just announced this summer, and they're, they've been fantastic. I mean, you know, so you definitely want to check it out. And if you're taking that first step from the uh, DSLR to a mirrorless, I think I think you're gonna you're Calvin's not gonna twist your arm or anything like that, but you're really gonna be kind of tempted after this presentation to go out and check it out. So, uh, without further ado, uh, this is Calvin Anderson from uh, Canon USA. And thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll be in the chat. So if you guys have any questions, myself and two other coworkers are there and we'll be uh, helping to answer any questions. Yes. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Um, yeah, as uh, Mason said, you know, we have the new exciting lenses and with the R5 and the R6, both of those cameras, I would say probably some of the most exciting products Canon has launched in, in a few years since the EOS R. Um, two flagship models, both different options, whether you need more resolution, high ISO, similar frame rates, performance, and a lot of focus areas. But you've also got the good classic Canon ergonomics on both bodies. And so we'll go through um, some of the similarities and differences, it's the key features of each camera. And if you have any questions, of course, just put them in the chat and uh, we will answer them as soon as possible. So with that said, let's begin. Let me pull up here. All right, so welcome. And you know, just a few, a few pictures to start off just from the, the R system, uh, downtown SF. And then this is a throwback to the orange sky apocalypse that happened 
God, I can't even remember anymore. That was a while ago. Um, but yeah, throwback to that. And then, yeah, also the apocalypse. <laughs> and so with that said, let's get into the cameras. All right, so we have the two bodies, both amazing, the R6 and the R5. Two entirely new generation, new sensors, new processing, all of that. But also they've uh, taken some of the features from the EOS R as well. So we'll go over the similarities and differences between these models. I'll mention two, a few things versus the EOS R, which came out in 2018. And, you know, to start off, I think probably the thing that everybody's going to notice right away is just the incredible speed of these cameras. I mean, how fast the burst rate is, the 12 frame per second with mechanical shutter, up to 20 frames with, with the electronic. And then just the focus tracking, all of that has just been very much improved and beefed up. It is fantastic. And, you know, that comes from the new Digic X processor, which is the newest generation Canon processor. Brand new. And then, yeah, this responsiveness, shooting speed, autofocus, and video performance, too. That's, that's going to be key. We'll mention a little of that in the end. Um, but, yeah, that's just huge. And then the biggest one of all, dual card slots. Um, I remember when we launched the EOS R back in 2018, this was a bit of feedback that many people had, is why has a single card slot, can I get a second card slot? So regardless of the R5 or R6, you've now got two card slots. So let's go over some of the six key elements. So design, um, layout, operation, reliability is just fantastic. Ergonomics, I think, are some of the best I've seen in any mirrorless bodies. Um, speed and AF, again, best I've seen. Image quality, fantastic. 45 megapixel on the R5, 20 megapixel on the R6. R6 is cleaner though, so you'll get the higher ISO performance out of that. R5 though, with that said, is also excellent at high ISO, especially considering the resolution. And then video is great. Um, so we already have a question right now. Can you address the focus stacking ability of the R5 with older Canon L lenses? I have a 7200 f2.8 and a 300 f4 that I want to do focus stacking with. Um, as far as I know, it works great. Um, there shouldn't be any issues. Um, you can do it all on camera now, and you have a very wide parameter of how many images to take. So it's no issues there. They should work fantastic. And OK, so also image stabilization, in-body image stabilization on both these bodies. That's awesome. And communication's also been improved and beefed up as well. So getting into design to start off, you'll probably notice that if you had an EOS R, there are some similarities here. Uh, you know, we have three different dials. You've also got the control ring dial on the lenses now with RF. We can set that. And shutter speed, you could do that on the little wheel on the top. ISO is at the back. And then the big thing, though, that Canon did with this is bring back the aperture kind of click wheel ring. So you can set that to do whatever you want, but the, the wheel is back. Um, let's see here. With the focus stacking on the 0.5 seconds, I'll, we'll come back to that. I think I have to come back to that one. But OK, so moving on next, we got the main dial on top, quick control dial one, quick control dial two, and compared to the EOS R, you only had these two, you had, um, oh, compared to the EOS R, you had to manually move the AF points with either the multi-controller or punching the little uh, magnification icon. Now, you can do this eight-way multi-controller, much faster way to quickly change the focus points and areas. They handle very similar to the Canon DSLRs, such as the 5D Mark IV. And also the trash buttons now back on the bottom like the 5D4 as well. Yes, so we have a question here of, does the body accept the lenses I have for my 7D? It does. Any of the lenses that would work on a 7D will work on this camera. You just need to use one of Canon's adapters, which we'll go into a little bit later. But yeah, they, they were all, all the EF lenses will work. EFS even too, you can shoot in crop mode. So yeah, you, all your lenses will, will work on these bodies with the adapter. Yes, it is awesome. Okay, so yeah, the quick control dial, EF, or the quick control dial and the wheels and control ring. And then also on the mode dials, 
So this was kind of, this is one of the differences you'll see. So on the R6, you have more of the Canon traditional mode dial. On the R5, it's more like what the EOS R was. So you have kind of the wheel with the mode where you punch in to quickly go between, say, video or still. That's one of the differences to notice. Um, size and weight. So both these bodies are very similar in size and weight. R5 is just about two ounces Hey, Kelvin, heavier, sorry to interrupt. But... Can you just check your video feed? Um, I'm just seeing black here on my end. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, there is, you go. Is it back? back. Yep. Okay, yeah. So, all right, video's back. Um, yeah, so the other thing, too, this is slightly thicker than the EOS R, if you've seen or used that body. Um, to me, that's actually a good thing. I think it gives you more more mass to grab onto. It, it feels more comfortable in your handheld. Dual card slots, this is the big one. Um, but there are two key differences, though, between the R5 and R6. On the R6, it'll take two UHS-2 SD cards. On the R5, it has the newest CF Express card, super fast ride speed, and then also one SD card to do UHS-2. And we will get to the IBIS a little bit later, but it is awesome. So, okay, so outstanding electronic viewfinders. So to continue going on to the IBIS a little bit, um, yeah, how does the IBIS work with EFS lenses as opposed to the RFIIS lenses? It'll work with both the lenses um, using the EF lenses with the adapter, but for like the very best image stabilization, it's gonna be the RF lenses with the RF body, with the R5 or R6. But I mean, you're gonna see awesome performance on both of them, but the very best is RF on the R5 or R6. Okay, getting back to the electronic viewfinders, R6, it's 3.69 million dots, awesome resolution. And then the big difference is R5, 5.76 million dots. This is the best ever. Um, it almost looks like an optical glass viewfinder. Like it's that clear. It's just fantastic. And then the very angle LCD screens. These are also um, new and improved. R6, you've got a three inch, 1.6 million dots. R5, you've got a 3.2 inch, 2.1 million. And then, so let's get into the reliability, weather resistance, and those type of kind of the toughness of the bodies. So on the R6, the weather resistance is very similar to the first EOS R, and then also the 60 Mark II. Um, and then the big one here, 300,000 exposure shutter durability. Excellent. That's actually slightly better than a 5D4. And then the R5, it has the weather resistance of a 5D4, so it's very good for if you know, you're going out in rain or anything or wind. But then the big one on this, 500,000 exposure shutter durability. That is about as good as it gets. And then I like this feature too. So this was introduced with the EOS R. When you turn the camera on and off, you can have the shutter baits close to protect the sensor. And Paul Holland has a question about dual pixel raw. So dual pixel raw, we're gonna get into a little bit later, but on these cameras, it has been improved from what it was on previous models. There's some new features like um, contrast control and also, you even have bokeh control, which we'll get into in more detail. So you can shift how the background looks a little. That's pretty awesome, too. Um, and that's newest just to the R5 and R6. Okay, so reliability weather resistance. R5, magnesium alloy exterior entirely, and then um, very liberal use of metal in the chassis. So you've got the alloy exterior with a very heavy metal inside the chassis. Not heavy in terms of weight, but I mean in terms of strength. <laughs> And then, yeah, so it's just, it's a beautiful body, how it's molded. R6, you have a polycarbonate exterior, similar to say a 6D Mark II. But then on the inside of the camera, there's the internal frame has magnesium alloy, especially around the sensor and the, the, the box in the middle, similar to the EOS R5 on the internal, but it's not quite as much. So the other big thing we wanna mention with both the new cameras is they come with a new battery but it's also cross compatible with the other existing uh, LP6 batteries, which you'd use on a 5D4 or a 7D or a uh, EOS R original. So the big difference is this new battery just has slightly higher capacity. Um, it'll use the same chargers as the previous, but again, these are cross compatible. And the, the big difference too is with the higher power, you can get a little bit better on the burst. Um, and you'll just, that, you might just notice that and a little more out of the video, but both you can use any of the other batteries on it.
that are LP6. And then you'll know it is the new battery because it has this little truss gram label on it. And yeah, about 14% higher capacity. So again, it's, it's got that backwards compatibility though and cross compatibility all the way back to the EOS 60D. So this is something you know we've used for a long time. So battery grip, there's a new one, the BGR10, fits both cameras um, and it'll accept any version of the LP6 batteries. So that's pretty great. And then uh, also folder renaming in camera, this is cool. So inside the menus now, you can go in and rename the folders. So when you transfer them to say a computer or hard drive, you've got your own custom name. And then it's up to five input characters. Remote control, so single pin E3 type remote control socket. And that's on the R6. So then we get to the R5, we have a three pin and three remote control socket. And then the R5 also has a traditional flash, so flash socket. Design. Operation and handling is just, again, fantastic. It, you, if you've used the EOS R or the RP, you're going to notice the difference right away in your hands. It just feels like a nice pro camera body. You know, the bigger grip, you know, just it's got, it's just got that. It's just it, the form factor and everything, the button layout is just superb. And then the viewfinders and all the weather resistance durability, it's, yeah, as good as it gets. So moving on to the next section, we're going to get into performance, the speed. So two totally new CMOS image sensors, same Digic X processor as the 1DX Mark III. So that's like Canon's fastest performing camera, massive increases in internal speed. You will notice it right away. Autofocus. Face detection, eye detection, and head detection are now all in the autofocus menu. And this new head detection mode allows you to have someone's head turn and then turn back and it's gonna hold. Um, eye detection, it's the best I've seen. And face detection, again, has just been improved even more than what already existed with Canon. Shooting speeds. So we have up to 12 frames per second on the mechanical shutter and also with electronic first curtain shutter. So that's, that's fantastic on both. And then we've also got high-speed continuous, high-speed, low-speed continuous, and high-speed continuous plus. Those are your options in the menus. Um, with the high-speed continuous plus 12, high-speed continuous regular is nine, and then low-speed is three. And then this is the big, another big, big-time improvement from the EOS R. 20 frames per second now on the electronic shutter. That is nuts. <laughs> uh, just unbelievable. Getting close almost to video mode with 24 frames a second. It's, that's just, it's remarkable. So to give you just kind of an idea of just how precise you can get with this, these new frame rates, the burst is just excellent. So electronic shutter, it's either single frame, one shot, or the 20 frames a second only and totally silent, no noise whatsoever. So when you're in any sort of environment where you need to be totally silent shutter, this will work. And you'll know you're in electronic shutter because it appears on the LCD screen or in the viewfinder, it'll have this ES logo. So EOS R comparison. So if we go back to the continuous servo speed, you know, you added an M mode of one five hundredth of a second, lowest f-stop number, and then, um, you know, you had a quick menu where you could have drive mode at low speed on the OSR, and then single point AF, server point AF were on or off, and then silent was disabled. And now, okay, so getting to battery power shooting. I know we mentioned that a little bit earlier, but to get the very best like frame rates, you want to make sure you're using fully charged batteries. Okay, so we have a we have a question here about what is the performance difference using electronic versus mechanical shutter. Um, the big one is, I always say it's best to use mechanical shutter whenever you can, because it, it freezes the action very precisely. There's no rolling shutter or anything like that. What you capture is gonna be very realistic. With that said, electronic shutter has been improved a lot with these cameras. Um, there'll be less bending or arcing, less artifacting. Um, it's it, The electronic shutter is fantastic, but there's still always times if something's like very fast moving or if there's a quick pan of the camera where electronic shutter might have a little bit of bend or note, you might notice a little bit of rolling shutter. 
But again, like the electronic on these two cameras is definitely the best I've seen. Um, there, it's very little distortion in them. Okay, and as we said, for the for the um, the best shutter rates and uh, the best frame rates, you're going to want to use the fully charged batteries. And yeah, the first curtain electronic mechanical up to twelve, shooting speed directly related to the battery power. And this is an example of typical battery life, but I would say these numbers are very conservative and low. Um, with the R6, we're saying 255, R5, 220, but in real world use, um, I've been getting a lot more than this, like way, way higher than this. So I would always say, take these numbers as the bare minimum. You're usually going to see much, much higher. Burst rates. So this gives you an idea of how long you could go. So on the R6, in raw, 240 shots, JPEG, 1,000. And again, this is with UHS-2 type SD cards, you know, with fast write speeds. And then with the R5, using the SD card, 66 shots, um, JPEG, 190. And then with the CF Express card, though, on the R5, you can get some pretty amazing burst rates. RAW is 180, and JPEG is 350. That's amazing for 45 megapixel camera. So ETTL flash, um, when using the flash on the cameras, uh, the electronic first curtain shutter, uh, it's 1 2 50th. And then also it's important to note, flash not possible using flow electronic shutter. That's another thing you lose when using electronic shutter is any ability to use flash with it. And then I see, moving on to some of the new flash features, which is cool. So if you're using a Canon flash on the body, and have it ETTL, you can now have a new mode called face priority. So it'll, it'll set kind of, if you're using any of the, the automatic modes, it's gonna expose more towards the face. So I really love that. Um, flash exposure comp, a lot of control over that. And you can also set the control ring on the RF lenses to do your exposure compensation, which is really cool. And then you have a speed, and this is via the speed dial on the, uh, the speed lights. You can do it that way too. And then again, like I was saying, that control ring. This is awesome. You can do your exposure comp there. Like that's so useful if you're an event photographer or doing. You just know right away. It's like ah, I need to drop down maybe a third stop, um, two thirds stop on exposure, and boom, just turn that ring and it'll work. You know, control the flash comp. So yeah, just just amazing. And you also have the option to lock your exposure after the first shot. That's cool too. With both cameras. So moving on now to performance with the autofocus. So it's unprecedented processing power. Got the Canon DigiCax highest AF performance ever in a Canon EOS camera, just amazing. And it's so good that Canon's now calling it like dual pixel autofocus two. So dual pixel autofocus kind of switches, it cuts both pixel into two photo diodes. So it allows it to track very quickly and accurately without doing any focus hiding. And we're calling a dual pixel AF2 because it is it is dramatically improved over a lot of the previous models like the EOSR. Same AF system is in both cameras. So you're not gonna notice much difference. If you were an event photographer, for example, or wedding, you had the R5 as your A, R6 as your B, your focus performance is gonna be very just the same, which is great. You have the total top flagship. Um, we'll go over a few of the methods. So you have a one point AF method, which that one's been around. And then you have a new spot AF, which this one really likes to get precise. And then you also have the expanded AF area, which is kind of the box with the four around. And then the, uh, the nine point around with the box in the middle. And yeah, so those are, the, those are good modes. And then you have, of course, full sensor and even larger areas. So this is cool. The multi-controller now, having this on the back of the camera, you can just use this to tap quickly and just kind of blast across the uh, sensor area and just move your focus points really fast. Love that, love that ability. This transforms the way you do AF. And um, yeah, the zone AF, these have been improved some too. So you have the big box in the middle and then you can move that anywhere. You've also got a large AF horizontal, a large AF vertical, and you know also this whole center. 
face tech, and tracking AF across it. Nearly the entire sensor. Yeah, so this gives you an idea of how big the, the uh, full sensor tracking is. Basically the whole thing except just right on the edges. So yeah, so if you're doing sports or something, just letting it even just go full auto, it's remarkable. It'll track, it tracks better than any other cameras I've, I've seen. You know, it's like, it is really is like a kind of a 1DX style, 1DX3. So yeah, the AF coverage over 100% of picture area, lens dependent, and then much finer AF detection, 1000 AF sounds total. Just to get, give a comparison, EOS R had 143. So this, this just brings it to a whole new level of tracking precision and speed. So yeah, the focus track just, you're gonna just be amazed. Boom, boom. So, okay, so AF menu. So there's a few changes here. Um, compared to the previous models, we didn't have a priority mode for people or animals, and now there is. So it uses Canon's new deep learning library, and it really does make a difference. You know, it'll, it looks for the eyes of person or eyes of animals. Um, and this is a, for dog photographers, pet photographers, this is a big, big upgrade. And this is something that only exists with the newest um, DigiCX processor cameras. And both R5, R6 have it. And then you can just do no, no priority as well. Just have it subject. And yeah, eye detection, here's an example. Face detect kind of looks for the whole face area. Head detect, this one's cool. So again, if you have a sports player turns their head fast and then comes back, it's gonna hold to that focus without hunting. Just, just, it is remarkable how it does it. Whereas previously you would lose the focus and then it would kind of pull back. So that's also an excellent new feature. So yeah, just, you know, dogs, cats, birds, works with all those types of animals in the animal mode, just, just amazing. And yeah, the, with the animal too, this is cool. So if you're in animal mode, it also has the eye detect. So it's very similar performance to what you get with, with uh, humans. Face detect with also animals. It'll know the animal face like a dog or cat. It's amazing. Um, and even the body detection for an animal. So this would be really useful for bird photographers because uh, you'd be tracking the whole bird flying. And we're saying it's, it is the industry's most advanced animal AF across the board. So, and it'll work. All these focus modes will work too with uh, Canon lenses at four plus two times extenders. Um, so you're not really losing performance even using tele extenders, which again, remarkable. So on digital SLRs, for example, um, usually for AF, you would need F8 or wider. Uh, the EOS R, you needed F11 or wider, and that was also on the RP. On the R5 and R6, to get the full autofocus, you only need F22 or wider. That is just nuts. Like, <laughs> yeah, I've never seen this on a camera before, and it, it really does work. So to give an example, Canon came out with a few new kind of like ultra lightweight 600 and 800 millimeter lenses that are F11. And you can use those lenses with the RF two times extender, which is new. And so that would bring you an F22 aperture and it's gonna work. <laughs> so it's, again, that's just crazy, crazy good. So sensational low light. Um, on the R5, you have the negative six EV low light autofocus performance. This is very similar to the EOS R. R6 is actually slightly better in the low light. You're gonna get negative 6.5 EV. So, but again, this is both amazing. Um, and to give an example of how dark negative six EV is, it's quarter moonlight um, at ISO 3200 at F1.4 at four seconds. And that is just, uh, yeah, uh, like unreal. And it, it really does work when you use it. Like it'll floor you. So focus bracketing. So we had a few questions about that earlier. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the cameras, it's, it's our, our best focus bracketing in, in camera system. But yeah, single image, just an example, a single image at F22. You know, it's pretty sharp across the area, but the, the risk with using F22 or anything kind of below F11 a lot of times on most lenses is diffraction, where you use a little bit of a resolution is lost. So focus bracketing allows you to avoid all that. You know, you can see it in the corners too, where things are slightly softer too. You still, with focus bracketing, you can get rid of all the diffraction and improve the overall sharpness. So this is a result of the focus bracketing in camera with the R5 or R6. So we'll go back, show, this is F22. 
this is focus stacking. So that kind of gives you an idea of, of what you can do now with these new bodies. So performance um, versus the 1DX3. We do get a lot of questions about that. So for the power user that needs like literally the absolute best possible focus performance and burst rates, the 1DX3 is still gonna be a little better. Like you're still gonna see some, definitely in terms of the burst too, you'll still see the, the best with the 1DX3. With that said though, I mean, these are really close. Like it's, it's, it's amazing. So yeah, so just kind of sum it up. Credible system speed, um, incredible new sensors with the Digicax gives you the same outstanding performance on the R5 and R6. Um, that's very close to what you'd have on a 1DX3. And then just terms of tracking across the frame, just amazing. And then the low light, just again, as good as it gets. So moving on now to video. So video is very important on both these cameras. They're both gonna be pretty heavy into video production. I'll just kind of briefly go over some of the key differences. So the look at, let's look back at the EOS R to start. So the EOS R that came out in 2018, yeah, it's 2018. It had 4K in camera, but it was cropped from the sensor. Um, I think it was like around 1.74 one crop. And then the 4K maxed out at 30p. So you only had 24 or 30p, which is great for honestly general production that covers you. But you had no 120p at all. Um, but you did get the 10 bit to 4K externals, which that was amazing. You could plug in an HDMI and you had 4K 10 bit external recording in Canon Log. So it was a great video camera. Still, it still is a fantastic video camera and it's, it's a great deal. But now when we get up to some of the new features. We'll, we'll, you're going to see the difference now with the R5 and R6. Both of them have pretty beefed up video performance. So no, off the bat, everything is full frame now uh, with the 4K. So full image, full width sensor performance. So no cropping, none of that. That's gone now. And then also you've got a new, you kind of can see the log mode, what it's going to look like in camera. That's cool too. Um, and then you have multiple ways to extend your dynamic range. So on a, you have traditional Canon HDR video. You've also got Canon Log 10 bit 422. And on the, the R5, you got the HDR PQ video 10 bit 422 as well. And then industry leading ability to record 4K 10 bit 422 files to internal cards. That's nice too. So your 4K 10 bit 422, instead of having to use external recorders, you can just do it right in the cameras now. And then to give an idea, like nearly every current competing product for this type of video recording solution requires you to buy a third party external recorder. So instead of having to go that route, you can just do it in camera now with the cards on the R5 and R6. Now, this is an important thing to note. So on the HDMI ports, there are some changes. So on both the new cameras, you need what's called a micro HDMI. So it's smaller than what existed at say the EOS R or the 5D4. Um, but it, it works well. I mean, I've tested them, haven't seen much difference at all. They, they, they work great. And it'll that will um, support the 4K out to the external recorders. So Movie Digital IS, this amazing feature. This kind of gives you even a little more advanced than just using the in-body and then the lens stabilization. So, and then this, again, this kind of even goes beyond what you can do just with lens IS and then stacked with the in-body stabilization. Just, it's almost like, if you're going handheld video, it looks like a gimbal or steady cam. Like it is, it is insane. So time code, that's now an option on the cameras. And then zebra display, another new option that's great. Zebra displays are really good to tell when you're over focus, overexposed. So they kind of, you know, they have the hash. This existed on video cameras for a long time in the pro world. And you get to set, you know, two different levels, whether for skin tone or highlight. Just really nice features. Yeah, so highlight. And then also you could do like a skin tone. So you can have zero, one, and two. You know, you could set one at say 100% exposure kind of IRE or 70%, which would generally be around a lot of skin tones, maybe the 65, 75 range. Oh, sorry, let me go back here. So yeah, the big thing, again, in both cameras and body, 4K to 60 frames a second, full width sensor, just amazing. With full sound too, so that's cool. So a lot of times on other cameras and in previous models, you wouldn't actually be able to record sound with the high frame rates, now you can. Um, movie Server AF, full autofocus performance at all 4K settings. 
And you, what's cool too is though, you do have the option to use the full width 4K or crop in. So if you wanna get a little more telephoto effect, you can do the crop mode. And for kind of the best quality too, the 4K on the R6 is oversampled from 5.1K. That's actually a good thing. So it starts out with the highest resolution and then brings it down for just a little bit more sharpness. And then in the 4K HQ mode on the R5, that new mode, that oversamples all the way from 8K to 4K. So it's going to even sharpen more. So heat during video recording. This is a thing that came up some, but honestly, I haven't seen any issues at all with it. Um, but there are a few notes just on it. So on the R5, there is a maximum recording time in 8K at 20 minutes, 4K at 60P of 25. Um, and then there's a 2959 recording time limit regardless of the heat. And that's been a thing with DSLRs and, and mirrorless cameras for a long time now. But when you really think about it, like full 8K at 20 minutes, that's really amazing. <laughs> that's remarkable. Other 4K 60 at 25, just great. And, and the camera's designed that it'll warn you and just shut down if there is a possibility of any heat if you're trying to do really long stuff. So to give an idea to the battery power, what you need, 8K, 4K, you got an hour 20 recording time off full charge battery. Full HD, two hours and 20 minutes. So a lot of people are excited about the new 4K and 8K features, but the HD videos, I mean, these cameras are fantastic for HD too, and they can go over two hours now, which super useful if you're just doing HD video. So strong 4K and full HD feature set. 4K full width, 4K oversample and 5.1 on the R6, 10-bit internal recording on the R5, and just the outstanding AF during video on, on both models, R5 and R6, regardless of your mode. And then differences in video capability. So R6, no raw video on camera. So that's important to note. No 8K either. It's just 4K or HD. Um, and it's IPV recording only. So sometimes that can be a little difference in editing. Um, and then it's also manual or full auto exposure modes only. And then the, high, the highest frame rates would just be the HD to 120. And then the R5, you've got 8K video in camera with the option of raw, like nuts. And then that's all I or IPB, intra frame or inter frame. So both, both options. Um, and you've also got more exposure modes too for the automatic options. And the highest frame rate in body for 4K is 120. Again, amazing. And then you have DCI UHD at 8K or 4K. So 8K, we'll just touch this briefly. Um, again, to give an idea of just how crazy the resolution is. So full HD was, you know, basically close to 2K, 1920 by 1080. Uh, David asked if there's any updates to the audio preamps in camera. Um, that I don't know. My experience has been though testing out the audio, it sounds pretty similar to the EOS R. So that's my guess, but I don't know that one for sure. But we could try to come back at the end for that. But it, it does sound very similar to the EOS R in terms of the noise floor and all that. So yeah, full HD was again about 2K. Uh, 4K, you know, that was a huge difference. You know, you had 3840 by 2160, four times the resolution of full HD. So that was a big upgrade right there. Now 8K, it's four times the resolution of 4K. <laughs> just, it's crazy. It's 7,680 by 4,320 pixels. Just, just unbelievable. But again, this is to the point where it might be a little more than you'd need for most of your video productions. I just want to note that. Probably one of, most folks I know stick to HD or 4K. But the cool thing about the 8K though, to go back to this, is say you were doing one camera shoot with one camera, one lens, you could actually get different crops from the same frame. You could do like your wide angle using the 8K and then in post you could punch in and also have a 4, 4K resolution um, telephoto looking shot. So that's really nice too from a post-production perspective. Yeah, just outstanding video files. Certainly would be future-proofed um, for anything coming. And then uh, that, that's kind of the main reason a lot of people would use 8K. And then the post-production cropping option. So to give an idea of what the R5 competes with in 8K. So like something like a red helium in 8K, that's a $25,000 camera. You know, the R5 at least under 4,000 roughly. So you got very good video options in 8K for a much lower cost than whatever else is out on the market. And this, a lot of this is due 
to also the just the Digicax, how powerful that is. It's able to do the high frame rate 4K with full autofocus and also the HK, AAK on the R5. So do that. These are your options on the R5. And uh, also I was gonna say too, the H265 HEVC. That's kind of a newer mode too. That's another new thing on it. Um, and with AK, you've got 29, 24, 24, and then DCI Ray UHD. And then Canon Log on or off options, and then also the HDR PQ in 10 bit, also an option. And AK Raw, I forgot to mention too earlier, that's actually a 12 bit video. So the files are going to be much, much bigger. So if you do get into any AK, make sure you get like huge, huge hard drives. Um, to give it a, the data right there is 2,600 megabits per second. 18.7 gigs a minute, crazy. Um, AK All I would be 1300 megabits per second. AK IPB would be 470. And uh, I want to mention too, to do RAW or I, All I, you do need to use the new CF Express cards. I, IPB though will work on an SD, with, as long as it's UHS 2. So gives an idea on just again, the data rates here we're talking about and what you need. So if you are buying a card, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's certified to write to at least the speed, these speeds here. So first appearance of Canon EOS video was on the 5D2 in 2008. So that was a full HD, you know, 8-bit regular type of video. Then, then we had the 4K on the 1DX2, 5D4 in 2016, and now we got 8K in 2020. So this gives you an idea of just how far Canon has come in the last 12 years. So to summarize, um, whether you're doing 4K on the R6 or R5, it's full width sensor 4K. And then you've also got full width sensor 8K on the R5. Internal recording, 10-bit, 422 video, both cameras. And then you have IS, optical, and IBIS, and movie digital IS for the most you know, incredible performance. And then the 4K on both the bodies is oversampled, which is great for sharpness. And then the R5, you've got the 8K to 30P and 120P at 4K. Amazing. So moving on now, we're going to get into image stabilization. So this is big. Um, we've had a few questions on this earlier. Like, I cannot believe how advanced this has gotten in terms of using lenses and bodies. Now it's just so far beyond anything we've had before. And this will work the best with the IBIS and the optical IS with Canon RF native lenses. The very top performance will be with RF native. So that's important to note, but you also get benefits using EF lenses on these bodies. But uh, to give an idea, you know, this is the mount adapters. So I wanted to show that too. So this is how you're gonna use your EF lenses with the RF bodies. Um, this is kind of a good one. The control ring one is my favorite. This one allows you to add the control ring to EF lenses to, shot, um, to set your f-stop, shutter speed, whatever you want, exposure comp. And then you've also got a drop-in filter adapter allows you to put a polarizer or ND in the back. And the polarizer is very similar to how a regular one is with a little wheel. And then the ND filter is one to nine stop variable. Very cool. And then there's also just a bare metal adapter for just general use. So, and also I forgot to mention, these adapters when using your EF lenses on the R5 and R6, they're weather sealed as well. So great for any time you need to go out and rain or anything like that and retain your uses of all EF and EF lenses on these cameras. So Canon IS lenses is going to be, you know, great performance. And the first time we've ever had in-body stabilizations with the R5 and R6, and it'll work for both still and video. And this will also work with EF lenses on these. And then it, we also have the sensor stabilization, which, you know, adds to this, which is how we get our IBIS. And in both the R5 and R6, it's on a five axis IS. So, you know, a lot of roll, pitch, those kind of movements, it'll, it'll sense that all. And it physically moves the sensor too. So very, very advanced technology here. And then you can coordinate them together with in-body and optical. So this is with EF and RF lenses but the very best will be with the RF. So coordinate IS, again, that's what we're calling it now. And you just, again, you cannot beat this. So but to the very best performance that I know has been tested is 
eight stops of correction using the RF 24 to 105 to 4IS, which is a popular kit lens with an RF body with the IBIS turned on and the optical turned on for coordinate IS. So to give an idea of how good that is, so at 105 millimeter with no IS, generally like the showest hand, slowest handheld shutter speed you'd want to use would be 125th at 105 millimeter. Now, if you use the 24 105 at 105 millimeter, you have four IS RF, you get eight stops slower shutter speed. So it'd be like doing a handheld photo at 105 millimeter at two full seconds. Just again, just mind blowing. Just totally mind blowing. So yeah, stabilization in the camera body. So, and this is important to note too, the, the IBIS, IBIS tends to work best more towards the wider ends of the lenses and then kind of normal focal lengths. So think of it as being the strongest, let's say 16 to 35 type lens or say any zoom lens at, let's say it's wider angle or maybe up to 50 to 85. But once you get more to the telephoto area, it, the optical image stabilizer tends to be stronger. So stable again, so like I was saying, stabilization will be most effective at the longest telephoto lengths with optical. So, but the cameras are smart enough that it kind of knows where your lens is zoomed at and it'll compensate either way. So, but what, what I love most though about IBIS is, you know, previously if you're using an image stabilized lens, you, you were getting good stabilization. A lot of them are four or five spots. But you know, with lenses without stabilizers, there really was no way to stabilize. And now you could add a couple stop stabilization to really kind of any EF lens, like I say, an 11-24 F4, that was, there was no way to stabilize that before. Or, you know, there's a lot of primes in EF. If you've got EF primes that didn't have IS, now they do. You can put them on the camera and they're gonna be stabilized now with the in-body. So, and you'll know you're in it. You'll always know when you're in stabilized mode because it'll just show this little hand on the LCD or the viewfinder screen. So, and then here is an example of say an EF lens using the adapter with one of the new cameras. So this has the IS in the lens. That was, the, that was a five stop, I believe on the 85 F14 around there. Um, so they'll work together simultaneously to give you the best performance. And you will turn this on and off just on the lens switch. It's not gonna be in the body. You'll just turn both of them on or off just using the switch on the lens. But with an RF lens with IS, it'll, it'll have a coordinated IS, optical and in-body IS work in sophisticated tandem. And you can also turn this on or off with the lens itself. And we are saying this is the industry's most advanced IS, um, at least for any full frame type of cameras. This is the very best. And again, that's with the, using it on the, the optical lens with stabilized and then the in-body stabilizer. So to give an idea of like good versus best, um, and using say an EF or RLF lens on these with no stabilizer on the lens, it's gonna be pretty good with the, the IVIS, especially in wide and, and normal. EF lens with optical IS using the IVIS in the cameras, very good. Now RF lens with optical IS, just outstanding. Again, up to eight stops of stabilizer, just, just crazy good. So I like this too, the magnification button, you can punch in, you know, really deep in and tell right away how good your stabilizing is. I like to use that a lot. Um, you know, a good way to test it is IS turned off, focus on a nearby detailed subject, just focus once, no need to refocus, press magnify, go in and you can kind of see if it's shaking at all and observe that shake in the viewfinder. Now turn on the stabilizers when you're punched in all the way and you're gonna see it kick in and it'll just blow you away. So, and again, I forgot to mention too, that these stabilizer modes also all work on the video side as well. So you don't even have to use the digital stabilization for video, you just do straight optical, but that extra one will make it even better handheld video. So movie digital IS, that's the one you need to turn on in the menu if you want a little bit more advanced. And you just lose a little bit of a crop on the video and that's it. Um, especially effective for countering, say large, kind of bouncing type camera movement. Sorry for the typo there. <laughs> So summarizing, stabilizer, again, continues to leverage all the features of the optical stabilizer that already exist in Canon lenses. But now these are the first Canon cameras to have the actual in-body stabilization, and it can work together with those lenses to get the very best performance. And the top, top, top performance will be with RF lenses using RF lenses that have IS. 
Moving on now, we're gonna go to image quality. So obviously there are big differences there in terms of the sensor, in terms of both resolution and ISO and all that. So R6, 20 megapixels. Um, you know, to me, this is great for event photography, uh, definitely enough for that. Um, if for someone that is doing say more landscape, maybe more studio, high-end portrait type stuff, commercial, 45 megapixels on the R5. Just, again, amazing. So the R6 sensor is based on the 1DX Mark III sensor. So if you have used the 1DX Mark III, it's gonna look really similar and you're gonna get that awesome high ISO, excellent read speeds. And then your max standard ISO on that's gonna be 102,400. On the R5, entirely new sensor, superior read speeds to um, a lot of the other high res ones we've had. And excellent still image detail, still got 20 frames per second shooting at full res. Um, standard ISO there will go up to 51,200. So kind of some of the key differences, R6, like that's your best IS, high ISO performance. R5 gonna give you the best overall detail to date in an EOS system. So file sizes, here's some examples. R6, raw is about 20, megapixel, 20 megabytes. Um, compact raw is gonna be about 11. Large JPEG 7.1 in the new HEAF format, which is a little more detailed compress mode, will give you, especially in highlights, will give you 7.5 megabytes. And that's for the R6. R5, raw is pretty big. So it's gonna be about 45.4 megabytes for the full raw. C raw is gonna be about 21.9 megabytes. Uh, and again, there's slight differences on ISO with, with the raw. And then large JPEG about 13.5, HEAF 13.4. Got a question about C-RAW versus full raw. So I usually recommend using full raw when you can, but C-RAW, to be honest, looks amazing. Um, the main, again, the main reason people just use C-RAW is just, again, it's storage. That's, that's the main advantage. You know, you still have the ability to change all the parameters and posts when you're doing your raw conversion. Um, and it just makes the file size um, a lot smaller. With that said though, for like the very best detail and the, the high, highest quality, the full raw is the best. But a lot of, I mean, you can use either one and it's gonna work well. Yes, uh, I'll go back to the R6 file size here. So yeah, right here are the R6 file sizes. Yeah, and then the question about, yeah, for the C-RAW too, yeah, you might be, for the full option settings, the full RAW I think is everything, but they're both both good. Hmm. Um, not sure what's going on here. Uh, give me a sec here. Hmm. I apologize. Uh, there seems to be a hang up here on the presentation. Yeah. There you go. I was able to go. Yep. Oh, here we go. It's back. Sorry. Um, apologize for that. Oh no. Did it again. I don't think it's going to zoom in because it's the PDF, right? I can, hold on, I can uh, open up here, uh, PowerPoint. Give me one sec, jump over to that. Yeah, give me, we were, I think, was it 210? 210. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, just give me one sec here and we will jump over. And thank you everyone for your patience. Again, if yeah. you have any questions while Calvin is uh, going through and finding this uh, exact example there. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions um, and we're happy to help. Wait, hold on. Yeah, give me, sorry, apologize. Just give me a few seconds here and we will get it back up. And then also too, if you, um, if anybody, 
did purchase an R6 lately. Uh, we've been updating the uh, firmware as well too, so I highly recommend doing that. If you have any questions about it, um, check out our support page. And for those of you that live nearby any of our service centers, um, feel free to you know book an appointment, and um, you know we can always do a, a firmware update for you too. Um, maybe even call 1-800-OK-CANON. Um, there shouldn't, don't quote me on this, but there shouldn't be a charge for a firmware update. I'm not sure if there is, um, but again, you can just do it at home and it's actually pretty simple. If you just go to the uh, specific product, so if you went to the EOS R5 and you went to the firmware downloads, all you do is download the firmware uh, file from our website and then you copy it over to the SD card or the CF Express card. And then you pop it into your camera and you can update the firmware yourself. Just be sure to use a full battery while you do that because um, you don't want the power to go off when you're updating the firmware. That's a big no, no. Um, and then also too, if you don't know about this as well, uh, check out our lenses because some of our lenses uh, could also use a firmware update. So as our technology improves, um, you may even see updates for some of our lenses and improved image stabilization too. Uh, so definitely check that out. Um, this is pretty cool that we can update the firmware on our lenses. So if you, if if I go into the menu here, and just so that way you can see, I'm not sure if I'll be able to actually show that to you. You can see the top one. I know this is a bad example. I'm just trying to fill time, folks. The top one there is a the camera and the bottom one is a lens. So you can see, you can update the lens firmware as well too. Um, so that's a kind of pretty cool to always keep our technology up to date. Okay, uh, Mason, I think we're good on this okay. one. So I think we left uh, off. Your we're... camera is off though. Oh, uh, let me see, make sure, is it on again? There you go. Sweet. Okay. I think right. we're good. This is around where we left off. So, okay. Continuing on, we will go again. Apologize for that. A lot of this stuff is new, so it's things happen, but so, okay. So kind of give you an idea of the noise performance. So I, I know we mentioned earlier, R6, you know, the best for the high ISO. I mean, from what I've tested so far, it just blows me away. Um, and th these sample images were the pre-production, but they look very similar. So, this was an original full image with the R6 with an 85 F2. So ISO 100, super clean. ISO 800, still very clean. 1600, amazing. 3200, 6400. 12,800, still pretty good. 25,600, you know what? You're starting to see it more, but again, still amazing. 51,000, yeah, you're going to see more. Calvin, sorry to, and then that's sorry to interrupt, Calvin. We're not seeing your uh, presentation. you got to start the uh, sharing. Oh, crap. Okay. Um, so it's true. If you're showing your computer screen, yeah. Uh, okay, so I do allow, right? Entire, do I grab entire screen? Yeah, go ahead and click yes. on allow. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then okay. go to I your see. presentation, mm -hmm. PowerPoint. There you go. All right, where was I? It went all the way to hmm. sorry, which view should you think I should uh, use? Mason? 210. It was a slide 210. So uh, I don't know if you want to scroll all the way. It's okay. Um, Let me go. Yeah. yeah, hold on. Yeah, again, apologize. I'm not sure what went on there. Wait, that's not what I want. Ah, no, I don't think this is what I want. I wanted the, uh, where's the full view? 
the uh sorry <laughs> it's enter full screen this is an ideal is this okay, okay. Mason, you, yeah you can go with that you can go with that okay yeah i apologize again everyone so again so iso 800 so let me go back to the beginning there so this is iso 100 on the r6 give an idea i kind of look in those areas for the detail this is iso 800 on the r6 iso 1600 and now we're down to iso 3200 and 6400 still amazing and then 12,800 like still usable and then 25,600 um and then we've got 51,200 102,000 and then uh here we go with dynamic range so um, approximately one stop greater than 5D4 in EOSR. And we don't publish the dynamic range number, but it's about a stop better than the 5D4 in EOSR. So again, those cameras were already amazing. And then you've also got some new tools as well for dynamic range. Swap back to the, uh, your presentation there. Here we go. There. Do you want me to go back into Demio? There you go. Mason? Here we go. We'll start from here. Yeah, Demio. Okay, yep. got gotcha. you. Oh, I still got to hang up here. Oh, here we go. Oh, can't pop back up. There we go. Okay. So again, ISO 6400, 12,800. Amazing, 25,000, 51,000, and also 100,000, excellent. So again, dynamic range. So this was something that's been improved on both cameras, but the R6, uh, I know for this one, it's about a stop greater than the 5D4 NeoSAR, which were already great. Additional tools for DR. You've also got picture style, clarity, all of that in camera, you can use um, you've got a traditional HDR mode and you've got HDR PQ for Heath. So understanding clarity. So this is a new thing you can set. Um, kind of, it can affect contrast, usually just affects highlights and shadows. Clarity, you know, this is an example of contrast normal. It's contrast low, contrast high. And again, you can set this for your Heath files in JPEG. Clarity affects the midtones. So this is an example of the clarity modes. Clarity low. Notice the contrast in midtones. Clarity high. This is the higher contrast midtones. Again, these are new settings with these cameras. Um, dual pixel raw. So this was introduced in the 5D4, and this is in the EOS R5. Just the R5 this was added to. Um, R6 would be different. But um, on the R5, you've got further image modes via the Canon DPP, which is digital photo professional software. You have image micro adjustment, bokeh shift, and ghost reduction. So R5, this at, and also that was on the 5D, 5D4, you had that. And then on the R5, even more than that. You had all those modes. And then you've also got on the R5, these new ones, portrait relighting and background clarity, each possible with in-camera raw processing, which now is also an option on the R5, these two new modes. So we'll go over that quickly here. Dual pixel raw, this is an example of the original image. And then portrait relighting, you can have lit from front, and then portrait relighting lit from left. So that's kind of cool. You can kind of shift kind of the look of the lighting even using the dual pixel raw on the R5. And then background clarity. You can do a zero or four. You can see the differences there on the left and right. So this gives you the, that option as well on the R5. So image camera draw, in camera raw processing on the R5. This is really cool. You can even do full batch processing of raw images. It's now possible with the R5 and it's honestly pretty fast. Just amazing stuff. So to kind of sum up image quality there, um, again, to go over some of the big differences, R6 is based on the 1DX3, so you're gonna get the very best high ISO performance. Dynamic range, about a, roughly a stoppish better than the 5D4 and EOSR. 
R5, great combination of speed and image quality. Um, and you've also got the raw in-camera processing solutions with the new dual pixel raw options as well. So communication, been some improvements here too. So Wi-Fi capabilities, both cameras have in-camera Wi-Fi. So that's something you're gonna get with both the R6 and the R5. Um, you can also directly connect to a server. Um, and now on the R5, you've also got five gigahertz Wi-Fi ability using the accessory, the WFT R10, new wireless transmitter. So again, built-in, full Canon Connect cap cap compatibility. Uh, you've also got EOS utility software support when you can do remote shooting too through the Wi-Fi. That's really cool. And um, definitely want to download the Canon Connect app to do that. Allows you to control the camera through Wi-Fi from far away. Um, you can set focus, you can set exposure, you can tap shutter, do all that. And that's with the R5 and R6. Um, and then also FTP image transfer, you can do that with the R5 now and set up a mobile hotspot to do it too, which is really cool. So, and again, this can also be uploaded to image gateway, the, the image.canon gateway, and you can have it do it automatically for cloud storage, including raw and even 4K video. And also will connect through that to Google Photos, Drive, and Adobe Creative Cloud. So built-in Wi-Fi capabilities. Again, it's fantastic. And also mobile raw processing. I forgot to add, uh, add that. Very, very cool. You can do that through the mobile DPP Express software. And it's available on iOS, came out in July. So again, the five gigahertz Wi-Fi, EOS R5. That's gonna get you your best speed and um, the least interference. So again, the main advantage why you would go the five gigahertz with the R5 using that adapter would just be the greatly reduced interference. 2.4, there's a lot more interference, but usually 2.4 can go a little further in the distance, but you're more likely to have signal interference. So five is the best for just like a real strong signal. For event photographers, it's gonna be real useful to have the five. And again, that's what that new transmitter Canon came out with for the R5. And it's, it's pro level, R5 would be very much similar to what you would get with the EOS 1DX3 in terms of performance. Pretty much every function that the 1DX3 has with the WT9, the new transmitter with the R5 will do. Incredible opportunities in news, photojournalism, events, those type of markets. Um, and yeah, I forgot to mention too, the distance, 450 feet up to, that is very, very good for Wi-Fi transmission. Like that is about as good as it gets. Um, also, you have the wired Ethernet available too with that adapter. And strong security. All the enterprise security level options are there too. So, and then two, and then also I forgot to mention, it doesn't have to be five gigahertz. You could go back down to 2.4 if you wanted. Vastly easier setup as well. You can just kind of save your network settings and pull them up really quick in the camera. And you've got linked shooting with R5 and R, the new WFT R10. And you can connect up to 10 of these remote R5 simultaneously. Amazing. And remote tethered too with EOS utility operation with your computer. Just very, very cool. Just using EOS utility. You can do it up to 450 feet away. And then, uh, uh, yes. And I know I mentioned earlier briefly about the new battery. Use the old LP6 batteries too. They'll work in the new transmitter. So summary, you know, up to, you know, you got a lot better communication options, server upload, can do mobile raw with DPP Express, transmit directly from the camera automatically, and just really just about as good as it gets for communication. So that kind of sums up uh, the presentation. Um, I'd like to open it up for any sort of questions people have. Happy to answer the best of my ability. We want to go to question mark here. We can go to view questions on the top there uh, where it says 17 and questions. We can start at the top there. All right. So question. Okay. Is this under, so we got a question here about does the, <laughs> did his R5 catch fire? Now um, another question, <laughs> can the camera be set up to automatically send JPEGs to my phone while I'm shooting? versus opening the phone app, connecting the camera, then manually choosing what photos transmit. Yeah, you can do it automatically now. That, that is, this is an option with the, the new transmitter on the R5. 
Um, and then just, yeah, you could have it set to just automatic send. Yeah, I believe it's, I was trying to look it up right now. I believe it's with the uh, low latency technology. And so um, it's great. You just got to remember to have a lot of room on your phone as well too. Um, mm -hmm. So when you do that. Yes. And then uh, GPS, I believe that's, that's built in on both, right, Mason? Uh, GPS on the R5, no. Oh, just the R6? I believe, I know for sure on the R5 there is it, but the R6. Let me check the R6, hold on. Yeah, that one I'm not entirely sure. I forgot, yeah. Um, I believe it, it does not also. Yeah, you need the... Yeah, let's see. Yeah, R5, let me, let's look and dig in there. I, I apologize, just had a little brain freeze there. Uh, yeah, the R... Yeah, GPS is in there. It's, it's built in. Yeah, GPS is. And you can use it. You can, well, what you can do is you can link it to your phone. You can link the cameras to your phone and use GPS through the phone. That's how it does it. So, okay. All right, so another question. So to update the firmware on the lens, should you take off all converters? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if that really matters for sure, but yeah, I, I would recommend just do it straight lens if you could. With Zebra, is there some situations you can't use it? Example in multiple cars, multiple cars modes. Um, I don't know what multiple cars, multi cars means. Multi car? Uh, I'm not sure on that one, but uh, let's get. Is the five available now? Can you go over to the lens new ring options again? Yeah, so the lens ring options, like you could do f stop, shutter speed, exposure comp, um, all of that right there. It's pretty much however you want to set it in the camera. There's a lot of custom functions. And ISO, you could set to do ISO as well. Even, I think, yeah, it's, it's pretty broad. Uh, Aperture mm -hmm. as well, too. So what's really cool is if you have the lens on the front, you can set that to be your aperture control. And then you can set the two top ones right here as either your shutter and then ISO. So then right here, you're not having to change anything. You have your aperture, your shutter, and then your ISO. So it's really handy to just keep your eye up to the camera and be able to take photos. Mm -hmm. to what would I notice most when upgrading from the 5D4? Uh, that's a great question. Um, 5D4 is an excellent camera. Um, it had the same image quality as the OSR too. They use the same sensor. But you will notice, say, on the R5, obviously the resolution. Um, and you'll notice a little bit more dynamic range, too. And then, of course, the speed. Um, the 5D4 had a great autofocus system, good face track and all that, but didn't have that eye track, didn't have the animal mode tracking. Uh, the image area focus was smaller, especially when in video. Um, 5D4 also had crop in video. So if you're doing video, no more of the cropping in 4K and higher frame rates, it's, it's quite a bit. Um, 5D4 is still an excellent camera, but you're going to see some pretty big jumps on the R5. For sure. I remember, I always tell this to everybody. My first full frame camera was the 5D Mark II, the EOS 5D Mark II. And I was like, this is the perfect camera for me. I, I'll never need anything else more than this. Then the yeah. EOS 5D 3 came out. And then I was like, oh, this is fantastic as well too. I'm like, I'm selling my 5D Mark II, keeping the 5D Mark III, and this is all I'm gonna need. And then the 5D 4 came out and I'm just like, oh my yeah. God, this is even better. And now the EOS R5 is out and it really is pretty much my like complete camera. You know, I love shooting landscapes and for any of you that also like photographing landscapes as well too, it's, it really does everything for my, for, for my needs. And so, mm. um, yeah, happy that I've got it. Definitely, definitely. Is the five manual mail available online? That's yes. So you just go to the Canon websites um, go to product support um, usually, and then usually just on the home pages too for the product. It'll be, just be there to download. And also too, there's a really great website that we have. It's cam.start.canon, and it has actually all of our manuals 
on that website, cam.start.can. And I'll put a little flag right here for a featured action. Give me one moment. So it's really great. So for those of you that love manuals, check it out. And we had a question about the focus stacking, I believe, um, about the limit on it. So, which I think we were going to go back to. I said, uh, yes, there is a limit. It's like nine ninety nine, so close to a thousand. Um, not that you would ever do that. You don't need that anywhere near that, but you could go up to the, like nine hundred ninety nine. Might not be able to shoot one f second. Um, I don't. I haven't tested that yet, but I would, for the best, like if you want to do really long stuff, I would think use the fully charged battery to get the best performance. And with the newer one, would the R5 be good for wildlife? Yes, definitely. R5, excellent wildlife camera. Mm -hmm. um, I see no reason why you couldn't. I mean, it's, yeah, it's great because you could do a 45 megapixel image and then crop in too to punch in more using telephotos. That's another option with that, that resolution. Definitely. And again, with the 12 frames per second and the 20 frames per second, you're not going to miss anything. You're, no. you're going to knock everything out. And also too, with the autofocus, we have the eye detection for animals as well too. So just be sure that you have that set as well. Mm -hmm. And then what is the biggest reason someone would upgrade from the R to the R5 and R6? Uh, for photo only, I would say just the R5, like the big reason would just be, again, the resolution and the frame rates, autofocus system, it's even better. Um, yeah, and, and you're going to get the frame rate and focus with the R6 too. So there, there's so, and then the ergonomics, just having the wheels back is great. And in terms of ergonomics, it's much more like a 5D4. So it, it feels more pro. So, but they're both, they're all great. The R, I love the EOS R still. I still think that's an awesome camera. But the R5 and R6, it's just, it's definitely a lot of improvements. Totally the big it. one. The big one is definitely going to be autofocus and speed. Yeah. There's just there's just those improvements with that, and of course, yes, resolution as well. You know, especially going to uh, from what thirty to forty five megapixels. So you'll you'll see that as well. Yes. And then, how does the weather ceiling on the R five and R six compare to the seventy two? Oh, your um, camera went out again. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Hold on. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. So it um. You know, it's it's uh, it's good. Like weather ceiling on the R seventy two was actually pretty excellent. Um, like I would say, the R it'd be more like the R five would probably be. Oh. Girl, but I'm not like the R seventy two is really good weather ceiling. So it's the all three of those are going to be good. But the R five I think would be the, the very top of that. I do lots of giggle pickle stitched wall mural work where I want to do focus bracketing. I need to do many repeated focus bracketing sets to cover the same focus range. Can the R5 be set up to do repeated focus bracketing series? Hmm. Um, <laughs> in terms of that question, repeated focus bracketing sets, I would yeah, I mean, you could do one set with your focus bracketing, have that save, and then do another, and then another. Yeah, it, it should work. But if it's accurate focus bracketing, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if it's going to be 100% one for one. Just because if things change or shift a bit, if let's say your starting position changes just a tad bit, I'm not sure if it's. Uh, repeatable 100%, like if it's that paramount. Mm -hmm. So um, I would definitely overshoot in that scenario, just so that way, if you thought of maybe doing 50, go, go for 100 and do that, just so that way you have that coverage, because you definitely don't want to start off doing a focus stack and then find out that you just missed that one increment. Um, so yeah, over overshoot in that scenario. As well as one more tip, uh, remember about focus breathing because as the focus shifts, the lens optics will shift as well too. So you might begin to see a, uh, well, you're gonna start off at the closest subject when you enable the focus bracketing. 
and you're going to see that the lens just a little bit is going to be shifting just because again the optics are going to be changing so your composition is also going to be changing a tad bit so make sure you have plenty of space on the edge part when you start off as well as when it ends as well too so you know play around with that mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of food photography, which would you suggest? Oh, wow. I mean, for the best detail, I'd go the R5. That way, I mean, that would give you the most post options, most cropping. I think probably, as long as, and if you have lighting too, R5. Only reason you do the R6 in that scenario would probably be just for high ISO. Uh, I'll still decide which was. And if you do any food photography, check out our tilt shift lenses too. Mm -hmm. They're fantastic for food as well as product photography because you're going to be able to shift that at tilt and shift uh, the depth of field for the uh, for for your subject, and that way you're going to get a greater depth of field as you photograph. Yeah. Um, a question about what would be good examples of the R5 or R6, depending on your photography type. Um, again, R5. I I think most people I've seen landscape, fine art, studio portrait. Uh, R6, definitely events, weddings, um, and those markets, maybe photojournalism. R6 is really good. Uh, if you were a wedding shooter, you've got dual card slots, 20 megapixels on the super high ISO. So that'd be cool. I see that. But they're both like excellent cameras. Like you could do an R5 as an A, R6 as a P camera. Yeah. Which picture styles do you prefer? Um, I'm big on neutral. Like if I'm doing anything with JPEG or, or that kind of stuff, I'm neutral's great, like really good with skin tones. Um, I find, and also for video, like neutral looks really nice. And it's good if you want to do a little grading as well without doing, say, raw or log. I really like neutral for both JPEG and video. Okay. Let's see, we got anything else here, Mason? Oh, focus breathing. Uh, well, that one just depends on the lens. But focus breathing, very lens dependent. But the new lenses are pretty amazing in the RF system with that. I, you know, back to the recommendation too for uh, R5, R6. If anybody's doing any sort of night photography, I'm partial to that. Um, R6 is definitely going to be the way to go uh, because it has the bigger photo sites inside of that sensor. Um, so it's fun to get out and shoot with it. And even, I know we didn't mention it in this conversation, but we have the EOS RA and that's for our astrophotography. Um, so if anybody's going to be doing any sort of deep sky night photography, definitely check out that and because it has... Um, enhanced features uh, to better suit for night photography. Mm -hmm. uh, 7200 F4, Mason, I think you... Uh... Which question is the 7200 Are there any F4? hints on when we'll see more off lenses that are more mid-range, like the 7200 F4? Um, mm. I don't know, <laughs> but we have... They're, they're coming. I'll say there's definitely a lot of, a lot of lenses coming. A lot of stuff well, being developed. For, for what we have, you know, we just announced the uh, R lineup for what, a couple of years now? I mean, we've got a full, full lot, like a pretty good lineup. And, and again, we just announced the 50 as well as the 7200 F4. So we'll, we'll be, I'm sure, you know, we come out with new products. So with, without saying anything else, because we really don't know, um, we, you know, we'll, we'll definitely be uh, coming out with more new lenses, you know, I mean, yeah, just like new cameras as well, too. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. Would you notice the difference between the EF and the RF 7200 F8? So my experience between the EF and the RF 7200 F28, they're both amazing, especially the version three EF 7200 F28. They're pretty close in terms of sharpness and performance mm -hmm. kind of across the range. You probably won't notice a huge difference. The main advantage to the RF, of course, is just the smaller size. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's what, a big advantage. <laughs> that, that's what was the funny thing about the 7200 28 the EF Mark II versus, and the three it was so hard to improve on such a great lens you know so that's why there was mm -hmm. so you still it's like if you go with the 7200 2.8 mark three it's a fantastic lens the rf as well is a fantastic lens um both both are just killer so i highly recommend them yeah it's a tse uh here's one for the we have one question here about the uh, intervalometer pen. So on the R5, on the R5, we have the three pin. It's just, 
just like what you had before with the 5D series. Um, and so it's the three pin versus the, uh, what, the one eight on the EOS R. I remember the EOS R is a smaller one. So for anybody who has remotes, um, yeah, you'll be able to use like, what is that, the TC80N3? You'll be able to use the TC80N3 with uh, the uh, EOS R5. Mm -hmm. So I think that's about it, looks like. Um, but yes, thank you all for coming. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, apologize for technical difficulties. It's all kind of new stuff, but uh, again, much appreciated. Thank you so much for coming today and tuning in. We, we greatly appreciate it. Oh, oh I'm, I'm still learning. Can you keep oh, yeah, going, no, please, keep going. Calvin? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I didn't know I did. Oh my goodness. Uh, what a piece of equipment. It just keeps getting better and better. And I keep learning more and the more I learn on it, the more I love the camera and more amazed and, and just the new possibilities that we have from it. It's just endless. So thank you very much for that last talk and really enjoyed it. And thank you, Mason. And thank you, Canon USA for being involved. And what a great talk. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again for having us. Aloha, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. So we will see you guys in the next session. Um, thank you very much and see you soon. All right, see you all. Cheers. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.